Hi, Gary Steerman. Time for another Prophecy in the News daily update. And Bob Ulrich is in studio with me. We're going to continue our discussion on why you should study Bible prophecy with uh, respect today to the nation Israel. Once we get started, it's hard to stop, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is, <laughs> for sure. The headlines uh, in the news again today, one after another, we're, we're seeing this encroachment all around Israel and all of these nations lining up uh, bent on destruction. So we're at that time. Well, you know, Bob, I, I want to say a word today about Israel. Israel is in the news, surrounded by enemies. The enemies are openly calling for the annihilation of Israel. Not war, not destruction, but annihilation. They want to wipe out every last Jew. Uh, it's hatred of the first order. And you know, they seem to get away with it. The United they, Nations is silent. Yeah. I mean, I thought they were here for peace and world happiness or something like that. And Not when, when Israel is around. And, mm. and if you really want to uh, elicit hatred, just mention the word Zion. <laughs> a Zion it appears 153 times in the Bible as a mm. word. In Hebrew, it's pronounced Zion, and it means a marker or a sign or to mark a place and basically what Zion is, is the Temple Mount. It was purchased by David uh, back about 1,000 years before Christ. David purchased that holy mountain and dedicated it to God. And it's God's favorite place on earth. And in Isaiah 62, verse 1, it says, For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace. Now this is God talking. And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And so God says in the first person, I'm not going to rest until Zion and Jerusalem are reestablished and dwelling in peace. Well, you know, that tells me a lot right there. Do I believe Holy Scripture? Yes, I do. Do I believe that Zion will be fully established? Yes, I do, because the Bible says it very clearly. And Israel really is right smack in the center of Bible prophecy. Bob. And yet the Jewish people don't control that Temple Mount today. No, uh, they, they don't, don't control Zion. It's there, but they can't get to it. Isn't that amazing? Well, it really is. And, and you got to wonder if at some point in the future the rights to that Temple Mount aren't going to be part of the end time peace agreement we read about in the Bible. The Lord is patient, but mm. he's moving forward at his own pace. And that's why we study Bible prophecy, because we're encouraged when we look at the things of the future unfolding progressively in the way that, that he said they would. And this is, I guess, the most exciting thing I can think about. You know, it's, it's fashionable today to deny the existence of Israel, to deny that the nation of Israel that was reformed, reformulated in 1948, is actually the prophetic nation that God talks about bringing back to the land in the latter days. Right. Uh, I mean, there are ministries dedicated to this where they basically are just making a mockery of Israel being back in the land, and they're saying that, well, these aren't the Jews. These aren't the chosen people. Well, who are they then? I mean, it's funny to us, but you know, the whole religion of Judaism is a little bit peculiar, and God's relationship with the Jewish people throughout history, you know, sometimes you think, why are these people so hard-headed? I mean, why can't they see the light? Of course, Scripture tells us that God has put scales on their eyes so they can't see. But I'm holding a copy of your uh, Time Travelers of the Bible book here. And in the wee hours of the morning last night, I was reading page 330. <laughs> and I, I just found this to be, just to be so insightful because the Jewish perspective on heaven, on hell, on the afterlife, you know, is different from the things we believe and what we read in the Bible. Uh, you've written here, it says, the ancient world of Israel and the prophets uh, were linked to the physical earth. Their Messiah was the promised descendant of David through the tribe of Judah. Their land was Israel. Their capital was Jerusalem. Zion was their future hope. Its God, their God was Jehovah. But when the promised Messiah came, he presented heaven as a reality. John the Baptist, his representative, the last of the Old Testament prophets, came preaching an entirely new message centered upon the promise of heaven. 
Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In the end, national Israel refused the offer of this kingdom that John presented and that God offered. They were entirely convinced that Jesus' offer didn't agree with their view of Scripture. In fact, it didn't. While Israel remained linked to earth, he was connected to heaven. They firmly held to the coming of an earthly king who would be a strong political leader. They wanted a strong man of God who would defeat the Romans and establish Jerusalem as the head of all the earthly capitals. So that's the Jewish perspective. They were mm -hmm. looking for an earthly kingdom, and when Jesus came, he came presenting an afterlife that was a little bit different, a heavenly kingdom. And in the mix, there is the story of Bible prophecy. And as we've said literally for decades now, uh, you don't fully understand Bible prophecy until you learn to distinguish between those prophecies directed at the mm -hmm. body of Christ, mm -hmm. the church, and those prophecies directed at Israel. And of course, when we teach prophecy, we very carefully lay that out. You know, Bob, a lot of the church uh, holds to a theology that says that the church has replaced Israel in the plan of God. Uh, we firmly believe that Israel has not been replaced in God's plan. They are right in the center of God's plan. We agree with the Apostle Paul, in other words. We do indeed. <laughs> and, and by the way, he had a lot to say about the future of Israel. Uh, in the book of Romans, he, he mentioned that, wait a minute, blindness in part has come to Israel until the times the Gentiles be fulfilled. Uh, we are almost there. I think we're almost at the point where the times of the Gentiles have been fulfilled. Yeah, you know, while you're saying this, I'm thinking to myself, I'm, I'm going back in time in the words of the Bible where it talks about how, how Jesus wept over the city. Yeah. And you can't help but feel sorry for the Jewish people. I mean, I think about what they have right. waiting ahead of them that they just can't see. Uh, we see the signs it's written about from <laughs> beginning to end. The Old Testament prophets, the New Testament writers, you know, talked about these end time battles, talked about this tribulation period that the Bible mm -hmm. describes as the worst time in the history of the world. Nothing even comes close to it. And here we watch Israel today being surrounded one by one by one by one to the point now where the destruction is on every side. You've got people like Ahmadinejad, you know, who are calling, like you said, for the annihilation of Israel, and yet the media and the world doesn't make a sound, not a peep, all quiet on the Western Front. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's depressing for Christians who are seeing this, and we feel for the Jewish people. We love the Jewish people. We've been grafted in to the Jewish tree. You know, without the Jews rejecting Jesus, there would have been no need for the church. That's right. And so, uh, in, in a way, we are a secondary part of God's plan. The primary part is Israel. It began literally millennia ago uh, when Abraham was called and, and, and he was told to go to a land. Well, that land turned out to be Israel and it's called the promised land in the Bible. And you know, uh, up until uh, perhaps the last few decades, that phrase, the promised land, you know, rolls off the tongue. People used to talk about it all the time. It's still a good phrase. Israel is the promised land, mm. and, is, and the Jews are the, are the people uh, who are dedicated to that land. By the way, if you, if you want to avail yourself of the story of the promised land, I can't think of a better way to do it than this DVD. Uh, we've uh, sent out so many of these. It's called The Final Prophecies, done by the Millers, Brent uh, and, and Brent Jr., and they do a phenomenal job of production, uh, like a trip to Israel, isn't it, Bob? That's even better. I mean, they take you a lot of places that you can't see That's when right. you go to Israel, a lot of places that are off limits to tourists. Uh, I mean, you're gonna see things like the actual physical Red Sea crossing. And I can tell you that your perspective yeah. of this, when you see this DVD, will be night and day from what you think it actually looked like when the Israelites crossed over on the dry land. The Red Sea is huge, I mean, it it's is. an enormous body of water. Absolutely, and uh, this, this is a wonderful uh, DVD. We've been offering it for quite a while, uh, offering it as a bonus now, along with my book, uh, Time Travelers of the Bible, and the video, the bonus video, Time Travelers of the Bible, which J.R. and I did as I was developing the concept that later became the book. All three of these items, Time Travelers of the Bible, uh, the Time Travelers video, and the Final Prophecies, 
yours together in package form. The package is called Ancient, the Ancient Time Traveler's Package. Got to get that right. The Ancient Time Traveler's Package. Order it that way and people will know uh, what you're talking about. Yours for $39.95 uh, plus shipping and handling. Uh, separately, these items would come to about $60. And they make a great package. If you've already uh, seen the final prophecies or don't think you'd be interested, remember, this is a wonderful witnessing tool. Hand this to a friend and get them started on the road to Bible prophecy understanding. Ask for the Ancient Time Traveler's Package. You know, if you look through our magazine, and if you were to pick one book and one DVD, that were, in my opinion, maybe the most important things in the entire publication to read. Uh, your book is just, uh, it's off the charts spectacular. You could, you could preach 700 messages out of it. Uh, every time I read it, I pick up something new. And you do have to focus on some of the information in there. It's not pablum. It's not things you know, you're going to hear in most churches in America today. Uh, you get into areas uh, in the science fiction realm in the sure. time travel realm, in the prophetic realm, and an understanding of who God is in ways that we as Christians just don't really take the time to consider because, as you like to say, nobody thinks today. Well, <laughs> I, I call it Bible prophecy for the 21st century man. Uh, it's for the modern individual. Uh, prophecy is not an old-fashioned study. It's as modern as tomorrow. Well, God is high-tech, isn't he? Oh, he is. <laughs> and, and this book will show you the many ways in which he is high-tech. Bob, wish we had time to go on. We, in fact, we've run out of time, but we're just, we're, we're kind of... We'll do it again. Yeah, we're... <laughs> we'll, Lord willing. We'll quit in a moment. <laughs> and we would remind you to keep watching. Things are happening so fast. Stay alert. Be a watchman. And uh, as we always say... You know, Jesus could come at any moment, so keep looking up.